A military exercise on board a minesweeper. Our reporter Oljai Ostemir has joined the German Navy. What's happened? What's going on? How realistically are the armed forces preparing for a defence incident? Oscar overboard, starboard side. No solid ground under our feet for two days, somewhere in the Baltic Sea. Faster, come on. Oh. A manoeuvre that takes this reporter to his limits. I'm really excited because today I'll experience the everyday life of a Navy sailor. I don't know what to expect because I've not been at sea for so long, nor have I been in the Army. This is Oljai's home for the next two days, the mine-hunting boat Dillingen. The modern combat ship is under the command of Captain Lieutenant Frank Heider. First appointment for the rookie sailor, roll call on the front deck, together with 43 new comrades. A very good morning to you all. For the roll call, as always, number and name without rank. Uh, 54. That's a good start. The rookie in this well-oiled team quickly realises this won't be a walk in the park. I didn't really know what was going on and just copied what my colleagues were doing here. To get through the next two days, Oljai has to memorise the procedures on board. Should there be a war, the ship would be used to defend the Baltic Sea from enemy attacks, to detect mines and destroy them. But before they can leave the port, the guns have to be mounted. The stack's still missing. It's lying down here. We still have to put it in. Do you want to try? Take the handle? It's heavier than I thought. The gun allows the ship to defend itself against attacks from enemies and pirates. The machine gun can easily take on speedboats or helicopters if needed. It fires about 500 rounds per minute. There are between five to eight NATO military exercises a year. Over the next 48 hours, a series of simulated emergencies await the crew members. Only Operations Command knows what is in store for Oljai and the sailors. And as soon as they are at sea, the action begins. Rudder failure, rudder failure. Occupy the engine room. Port side, 20. Rudder failure means the ship is not manoeuvrable. The reason can be a mechanical fault or battle damage. The sailors must steer by hand. Come on, faster! Oljai is supposed to turn the 644-ton monster. The orders come from the captain on the bridge. Backboard, 20. Hard port. Now you've got to go 45. Finally, the steel colossus turns and Olchai realises how fit a sailor has to be. <sighs> Memo to self, start exercising again and train your triceps. If a sailor falls over the side of the ship, his rescue has absolute priority. The captain insists that this team must constantly practise the man overboard manoeuvre. Does the crew know? The crew doesn't know. They have to react to it now. Oljai's job? Throw the crew member, Oscar, into the sea and sound the alarm. Oscar overboard! The Baltic Sea is cold, about three degrees. Without special equipment, a person can't survive for long. The goal? To recover the victim in a maximum of eight minutes. This was done within five to six minutes, so the boys are really well trained and fast. Meanwhile, the minesweeper has made its way onto the high seas, and our reporter can finally take a break. He wants to learn more about life on board and so meets up with the captain. Oljai notices that some rooms on board are decorated with souvenirs from all over the world. For example, in the mess, as the dining room is called, the flag of Ally Great Britain has been hung up. You hang it up to make the whole thing a bit more homely. This is part of the old sailor tradition, that you have your own four walls and that's basically the whole boat. So everybody sees this as their own four walls, which we adapt and decorate the way we want to. 
After the refreshment, Oljai needs to report to the control center, the brain of the boat. Here the sailors locate underwater mines with the help of modern radar systems. What the reporter doesn't notice at first is the weather changing outside. The sea is getting rough and his stomach doesn't like it. I think I need to get out of here for a minute to... Um, get some fresh air. Exactly. Up here, right? Thanks. Nausea and disorientation. Are these the first symptoms of seasickness? For Aljai, this could mean complete failure. I'm really not feeling very well right now. Although we haven't been on the boat for that long, it's wobbling quite a lot. And because I've not really got used to it yet, I'm just going out for a bit of fresh air. I just hope I don't throw up. It can happen to anyone, even experienced sailors. It is also called motion sickness. The brain is confused by the contradictory motion stimuli it's being exposed to. OK, that actually did me good. I feel much better now. Unfortunately, the effect soon wears off. Olchai is fighting with himself. And to make matters worse, the swell is getting stronger. I don't know how I can keep this up for two days. The sailors are familiar with the phenomenon. Sick backs are standard onboard equipment. <laughs> if you start to feel sick, we have these all over the boat. Thanks. It's OK at the moment. I feel a bit better, but I'm going to put it in my bag. Thank you. Once seasick, it rarely gets better on its own. Usually the symptoms don't go away until you get ashore. But Oljai is hundreds of miles from the harbour and the swaying on the upper deck is never ending. He hopes it will be a little more comfortable in the hull, but on the contrary. You OK, Elchai? Not so bad. Outside it was all right. When we were down in that dark room, I just lost my orientation completely. Loss of orientation and nausea can be followed by severe symptoms and even circulatory failure. The paramedic therefore takes these signs seriously. You need to go up to the aft deck so you can see the horizon. That should at least reduce it. All Jai's body rebels. I didn't think it had hit me so hard. That's normal. You're not the first and you won't be the last. Seasickness can lead to complete despair. So in the past, six sailors were tied to the mast to prevent them from jumping into the water. I'm on park Put a parker on and get nice and warm. And as stupid as it sounds, just spend a few hours here. OK. The naval ship continues to blast its way through the Baltic Sea. Despite the weather conditions and seasick sailors, the manoeuvre continues. In the afternoon, the sea and Ulchai's stomach finally calm down. The only question is, for how long? I feel a bit better already, but I won't go too far away from the bag. It could all start again at any moment. But right now, the swell's lower. And I wanted to see how my colleagues are, working here at the helm. Hello. Hello, you feeling a bit better? A bit better, but I'm just not used to it. It's the same for most people, especially at the beginning, when the sea gets a bit rough. Nothing to worry about, though. It happens to the best of us. It's the captain's decision. Despite his condition, Oljai is allowed to take the wheel and experience what it's like to manoeuvre a warship. Take course, 110. Course 110, right. The steering wheel in one hand, the sick back in the other. A real sailor couldn't steer a ship like this, and it doesn't go well for very long either. I just need a short break again. For the reporter, the day is over. Medication won't make things better either. Oljai gives up and wants one thing only, to go back to his cabin. But you can't simply lie down just like that. There are strict rules on board and even the newcomer has to follow them.
This is the Navy. It's not like at home with duvets and pillows. We have what we call bunks. To make sure that this is the same for everyone and looks neat and tidy, a bunk has to look like this one. I want your bunk to look neat and tidy. Everything you need is in the middle there. Okay. With his last strength, the marine freshman makes up his bunk, even if seasickness makes it difficult to concentrate. Ah, it's the sheet. That's for the duvet. <laughs> Tidiness is a must. I'll have to hurry, he'll be back in a minute. There, I'm done. I can see that, everything finished. Doesn't look bad at all. Look here, if you're going to do this, do it properly. It's something we have to pay attention to. And tomorrow morning, you make your bunk just like you've done it now, and it all starts again tomorrow. So, sleep well and get some rest. Good night. Okay. Super, thank you. What a day. I'm so looking forward to my bed. Uh, sorry, my bunk. I'll sleep so well because I'm really exhausted now and I'm just wondering what's in store for me tomorrow. I hope I won't be feeling as bad as I did today because tomorrow I really want to help and do my bit. So now, a good night's sleep. Good night. But after only four hours, the night's rest is over. The boat's vibrating. All hands to damage control stations. Day or night, a military exercise can turn into a real operation at any time. What happened? What's going on? There's been some impact. We don't know exactly what happened. Announcement from the captain. The boat has a leak. Oljai has to help to repair the damage. Here you have the measurements. Hurry up, the water level's rising. There's a crack in the boat. I've got to hurry. We have to take protective measures. In case of emergency, a wooden pluck cut by hand will serve to stop the water from entering. The team has to fit it in with millimetre precision. And then it's straight on to the next job. A fire has broken out on board the minesweeper. But where? We're converting you into a BAT. BAT is German Navy speak and means fire defense squad. A fire on board can be more dangerous than taking in water. The boat is made of steel. A fire heats everything up like a furnace. For this exercise, operational command uses a fog machine. Open it backwards. You can adjust it here. So, Elchai, fire's extinguished. You did great. After 48 hours of continuous use, the captain gives feedback. How did our completely inexperienced seafaring reporter actually do? I have to say, for the first two days, you did very well, especially with the one and a half to two metre swell. You deserve my respect and compliments. But to be a real Marine, it takes more than one training session. Resilience and fitness are what's needed here. I got seasick and I hardly slept. In the long run, this is not the life for me. But I have to say, I have a lot of respect for the men and women in the German Navy. For Captain Heider and his crew, this was just the beginning. Soon the heavily armed warship will be leaving on a real NATO mission. And by then, everyone on board should be seaworthy.